This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, Jonathan is taking a look at the alternate universe historical weaponry of Foxhole, with of course a little help from the game's community. Come across the Encore Regiment here at the front of the line. So I'm <laughs> completely distracted by the black and white, apparently old timey war correspondent there. That's genius. If there are any other games, guns, and mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. And for something a little bit different, make sure to check out our new series, Mind Games, a show that explores the psychological impact of gaming from a relationship with loot boxes to the psychology behind horror games. Thank you again to everyone in the Foxhole community who submitted clips to show off some of the game. But without further ado, time to check out the guns of Foxhole. The fir first one up, the Ar Argenti. Now this is a an apparently self-loading rifle. We've got some some somewhat fudged loading animation where we're, we're sort of, it's, it's got an extended box magazine on it, but we're loading it from the top. As we know, that's something that was done historically up to maybe the 1950s, depending on what the weapon was. The rifle itself has a very long spindly looking cocking handle on it. Too spindly, I would say. Now, that, that having a big long sticky out cocking handle with a knob on it is not as unusual as you might think for a self-loading rifle. Case in point for sticky out cocking handle with a with a large knob on it. Uh, this is the Che Rigotti, an Italian self-loading rifle, very rare, very important. Given the name of this thing, Argenti, Rigotti, the pseudo-Italian nature of, I think, uh, this faction. If anyone like me doesn't know the game, clearly this is an alternate reality with fictional nations. And it gives them the freedom to come up with whole whole new set of weapons and equipment and everything else. Which is which is a way to preface me saying that actually it's not that close to the actual Che Rigotti. The overall silhouette is not far off. The front end is is somewhat reminiscent, but it's not it's by no means slavishly copied. In fact I'd say it's pretty far off in some ways. Nonetheless, I think this this definitely fits the vibe of the alternate reality never-ending war scenario that we have here because I'm seeing hints of first and second world war in the general style of this game I'm just gonna say what I see this looks like a I hope the developers will forgive me a worms version of a boys anti-tank rifle <laughs> I probably lean more boys but then it is a bit L39 Lati as well 20 millimeter anti-tank so yeah I'd say probably a mashup of those two um, that sort of knuckle bow trigger guard thing I think is is not something that either of those ever had in keeping with reality it doesn't look like it's capable of knocking out a tank well not without many shots anyway there's my initial impression and then a couple of shots to take out a lighter vehicle is probably about right depends very much on the distance the type of vehicle where you happen to hit it a single boys round through an engine block would disable or into an engine block i should say not through would disable a lot of vehicles but it might not if it doesn't hit the right thing Although this is not this is not making any great pretense at photorealism or anything like that, or, and clearly the weapons are somewhat abstracted and stuff. The heft that the I guess the player character has that showing you know this is a big heavy thing and I'm having to apply effort to remove the magazine that conveys more weight and realism than a lot of first-person shooters do with their absolutely perfect representations of, of the actual weapon. You you can be quote unquote realistic in different ways and, and I got that impression from just from that clip. Even more intrigued by that bit of gameplay there. So the, the weapon itself probably maybe a somewhat of a mashup of the, the Lewis gun and the Vickers GO gas operated, the Vickers K gun, but it is definitely in the ground role, set up as a as a light machine gun. I'm more interested in how it's being employed there. Somebody is posted up in the prone firing bursts. More importantly, what they do what they appear to successfully be doing there is suppressing. Suppression systems. They either either non existent or they don't work very well. <laughs> uh, and of course in real life, a bullet passing near you, over your head, cracking past your ear if it's supersonic, 
or thumping into the ground, all of those things make you reconsider your life choices uh, as, a, as a combatant uh, of whatever kind. And that's something that's very hard to actually pull off in a game. You're, you're left with an impression of a game that doesn't deal in realism in detail because it's taken a, you know, an abstract art style and an alternate reality setting and some artistic license but that has a lot of potential for feeling like you're in a real first half of the 20th century battle, even if you're not able to, to truly represent that. And, and who is? You know, no, no game can, can truly represent that. All right, another rifle to look at. Now, lots of different inspiration here. We've got a very Schmidt Rubin style cocking handle there. This is the French Mass 44. Now, the main difference here is this is very, this is quite, quite slim, but quite squared off. This thing has more of a tubular receiver, but even, even the shape of the magazine, design of the magazine is not too far off on this. Uh, admittedly, this has the magazine catch built into the mag, which is weird. And you can see the stock con configuration, very reminiscent of what they've gone for uh, here. Uh, but that particular shape is, I think, definitely a cue, as is the, the semi-pistol grip uh, stock, which is, again, not universal on rifles at the time. And the configuration with this um, bayonet tube under the barrel where the bayonet locks in. Now, that's not present, but there is a hint of a, of a second tube underneath. We've only got uh, one barrel band on, the real, on this real thing, or a barrel band and a nose cap. This gun has two barrel bands and no nose cap. Relatively close, uh, and actually just a really cool historic rifle to, to have an excuse to, to get out and briefly talk about. Come across the Encore Regiment here at the front of the line as uh, mortars, as mortar action uh, prepares to try and wear down the warden line. Wow, what a fascinating game. So I'm <laughs> completely distracted by the black and white, apparently old-timey voice. Forgive me if that's your real voice, sir, but um, <laughs> war correspondent there. That's genius. I love the idea of somebody joining a server just to report on the war as it's going on. Now, I, I, have, I have been made aware that this is a persistent multiplayer online war that's going on, so I, I, do, I understand a little bit of the context there, but I, I've never, literally never seen that done before. Now, the actual mortar gameplay there. So we've got people working together, both multiple mortarmen, but also someone with a, a pair of binoculars that seems to be facilitating how they're able to see what the hell's going on. All, all very good and quote unquote realistic. Um, the only thing that, now I'm not a, not a tactician or anything, but um, all rather bunched up. And we saw some counter battery fire there where they got clobbered from by the enemy firing back at them and they all would have taken damage presumably from that hit. Whereas if they'd been more spaced out and coordinating on a single point of aim um, that would seem to me to be better but multiple clips of guys bunching up and spamming mortars so I, I'm guessing that's advantageous in the game rather than spreading out which may or may not speak to how realistic things are currently okay I killed the other guys I killed the other guys go 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 shoot the tank shoot the tank shoot the tank go yeah good job good job fall back all right an interesting anti-tank weapon there not, not bang on, but um, more reminiscent of something like the RPG-2, which is what I have here. Very much a metal tube with a wooden heat shield, but it's an interesting choice because, well, this is definitively post-war. It's been worked on in the 1940s, but it's not, not in production until the 50s, the RPG-2, and then within only a, a decade or so superseded by the much more famous and more capable RPG-7. But I suppose superficially the technology level of it, it feels plausible to be in this game. We have things like the Bazooka, uh, the Panzer Shrek in the Second World War. So if this appears later on in a, in a game, then yeah, why not? Right, this one threw me um, for, for several minutes there because I was racking my brains to think what it could be. Size and proportions may be of a heavier machine gun, but I think it's, 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 got, it's on a bipod. It's meant to be a light machine gun. The drum magazines on the side, not very common at all. Um, there are a couple of designs that do it. What they must have based this on, though, is the, the Rybel M1931 designation. Uh, it's a, a French 
French machine gun intended, I believe, for armoured vehicles and fortifications, not for this kind of infantry use, but for all I know it was adapted with a ground kit. So if you, if you have a look at, that, look at that, it's got the same curved buttstock, tubular uh, strut, vaguely similar silhouette, and especially that single rotating drum magazine on the side. Very distinctive curved, reverse curved pistol grip, because it's there to allow you to, if necessary, fire down using the bottom part of the pistol grip or fire level by holding the upper part. So clearly the game is taking some, not the, not the first one we've seen, but some real life inspiration and a lot of license as well. Strong, strong impression here from the, the 3D model of a mashup of a Thompson and a Papasha. So the two submachine guns. Whereas in fact in the game this thing's functioning as a rifle. It's, it's got visible recoil, more so than a, either of those SMGs would have. I happen to have a Thompson floating around here. It's a, a model 1928. Don't have the drum on this one, but um, otherwise it's not, you know, the back end is very reminiscent of what we just saw there but it does have that sort of heat shield arrangement and drum obviously this is capable of taking a drum as well but the two together make me feel like it's a sort of cut and shut of those two guns but the thing itself is a rifle firing a larger more powerful cartridge uh, now both both types of both classes of weapon uh, superb for what you might call clearing a trench and what I've just seen there is a clip of a guy doing just that jumping into a trench and taking a group of enemy soldiers by surprise and using um, surprise and <laughs> weight of fire taking them all out and that's what both of those weapon classes are very good at so this is almost what what might have happened if Thompson had gone back to the drawing board on the automatic rifle that, that he worked on at at one time and came up with a sort of diesel punk take on that still with a drum on it but firing a rifle cartridge and then at some point someone's come up with the intermediate caliber concept as well but we're, we're working with alternate history here so nice good work all right well this if i had to if I had to pick a weapon from this game that I've seen so far that has a very clear, unequivocal inspiration, it would have to be this one. Uh, because this thing is a, and I don't mean this in any disparaging way, a cartoon MP40. It's a, it has a sort of caricature proportions of this thing. Uh, the design of the buttstock, the way the pistol grip, lower receive, everything is, is set up. The magazine housing, uh, the barrel sticking out on its own like that without a, without a shield or a shroud on it. And actually the way it's depicted in use as well. Somewhat steady, slow-ish rate of fire appeared to keep most of its bullets in a line top down, which is what, what you want. And this thing does that. This thing stays pretty much where you put it and just chugs away. So it's it's like, you know, I've heard people describe it as like, like shooting a sewing machine, if that makes sense. Just chugs away, putting holes where holes need to go. Very hard to deny that inspiration that that and what, what it's alluding to whereas other guns in the game are are more mashups or they are more original up here thanks man Okay, this is a fascinating game. So my first impression was, wow, that's big. It's like a 50 caliber machine gun, an early water-cooled one. And then I see the, the in-game menu and it's 12.7 ammunition, which is indeed 50 caliber or in that class. This is a true heavy machine gun. Now on the one hand, uh, well, or a, a heavy machine gun by, by modern standards, I should say. So that's, that's somewhat anachronistic for our version of this period of history because these were not infantry guns. These were guns for mounting on tanks, for putting on some aircraft. These things are, were deemed too big and heavy to be moved, even with a, with a team of six, like a, like a Vickers gun would be moved. Right. Now, uh, in, in terms of the actual deployment of it, really nice to see you have to work as a team. You can carry that big gun around all day long, but if the guy with the tripod doesn't go and stick that somewhere for you to put the, the gun on, ideally not in an exposed location where you're gonna get shot, you cannot use that gun. Now, the teams that existed were actually, you know, more than two guys. You, you needed at least, at the very least, three. One with the gun, one with the tripod, one with some ammunition. 
efficient, and that would be bare bones to actually efficiently run a machine gun. But this is a, a major leap forward compared to just about every game I've ever seen in terms of how it represents the medium slash heavy machine gun. All right, so now anything with a rifle caliber magazine on the side, people are going to think FG42. This is called a Storm Rifle. Storm Rifle, the literal translation of Sturmgewehr, usually translated as Assault Rifle, loosely connected to the name, and a magazine on the side, and it being rifle caliber. You might think FG42. However, what this looks the most like to me, receiver-wise, it's a little bit reminiscent of a Sten especially this Mark V with its wooden buttstock and pistol grip, although this gun has those combined into a single unit. That's not very common. Usually it's either a stock with no pistol grip or it's a separate pistol grip as on this uh, Mark V Sten. But it's hard to argue, I think, with this reinforcing ring, the tubular receiver and the little sight on the rear. The Sten also has a magazine on the side, albeit the other side, albeit pistol caliber. And then it does uh, drop down to a sort of the barrel, obviously, at the front end. Uh, the resemblance kind of ends there, to be fair. So this is, this is it's very much its own thing. At least a couple of design cues there. You, you could probably spot others that I'm not thinking of. But it's, it's I, I would call this an original design. All right, this is really quite out there by the game's own standards, I would suggest. An octagonal barrel? No, a hexagonal barrel. Not, not unheard of in firearms, but very uncommon in the self-loading slash automatic era that we are very much in with this game. The magazine sticking, uh, being straight, but sticking out to the front like that is a bit curious. There are a couple of submachine guns that end up looking like they have a magazine sticking out, jutting out forwards, and then the UMP tends to give that impression, but not, not to this extent. The only thing on this that jumps out to me as being real world inspired is the pistol grip, which looks an awful lot like it's based on the AKM plastic pistol grip. The buttstock is very flimsy looking. I wouldn't trust that if, it, if this was a real gun. It looks, it looks a bit over-engineered. Very, lots of very straight lines. Unusual looking thing. Yeah, really curious. Ready, three, two, one, and send it. I keep shelling, don't stop. Wow, that was that was seriously impressive. I saw the, the model for this uh, big artillery piece and I thought I was gonna see one of those in action and only to see a, a ton of them as a coordinated artillery battery. Uh, that's gotta be the most impressive video game artillery thing I've ever seen. Not that artillery is really very front and center in most games. To do it any sort of justice is, is, is very difficult. This is probably the closest anyone's come, I would suggest. Artillery is still more important than most other forms of military unit and certainly most other forms of gun. So to, to see that a sort of devastating artillery barrage like that uh, is really impressive. Clearly teams of people having to be used to run these as well, which is, which is realistic as well. In terms of the gun itself, I think it's loosely based on the, the famous um, German Big Bertha railway gun, or very large artillery piece, which, I did, which did come in a, a I think it was a 30.5 30 centimeter variant. This is, this is meant to be a uh, 300 mil artillery piece. Big stuff like this, usually transported and fired from rails because it's the only way to get something that's what, 42 tons, I think Big Bertha was. It's the only way to get these things around and into any kind of position where they can fire. But when they do fire, you're talking potentially ten, well, tens of miles of range from, from a big artillery piece. Well beyond what a normal game map can possibly handle. So all very impressive. Right, some, some quite hypnotic flamethrower footage there. Not necessarily the most realistic flamethrowers we've seen. I mean, they're, they're, they're not glaringly wrong or anything, but uh, more than anything else, the depiction of the flaming fuel. So these things projected, as I'm sure a lot of you know, thickened flammable liquid. So it's not only flammable, it is flammen, and it will stick and burn, and it's pretty horrific. There's no evidence here of this liquid sticking to anything. It doesn't appear to be persistent. It does appear more like an old school video game flamethrower where you have an area of effect, and as soon as you stop, well, the, the character might be set on fire and taking heat damage, but 
but they're not having the environmental effect that we would expect from a flamethrower. These are representations of flamethrowers of the world wars. So the, the, the one with the two tanks on a, on, a, on a backpack is somewhat reminiscent of the, the American M2, and the single tank with a couple of extra features of interest on it is more like one of the German Flammenwerfer designs. That said, um, if I was playing this, I wouldn't want these things anywhere near me, especially not two of them sort of coordinating, crossing the streams, as it were. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, this is a really interesting one f for me. Bit of a departure from some of the, the first-person shooters that we've covered, to say the least. If you can, please do come and visit us at the Royal Armouries Museum here in Leeds in the UK or at the Tower of London. Uh, we're also present there and down on the coast at Fort Nelson where you can see some big guns. Uh, not Big Bertha, but we do in fact have a, uh, an 18-inch railway gun down there that is very much worth a look. Otherwise, we'll see you again next time. Thank you.